Hi, in this video I'll be upgrading one of my gaming pockets. I'll be replacing the shell, rubbers and buttons, and I'll be installing an IPS screen. Um, I'll be using this yellow gameboy pocket as a donor. It's in a rather bad shape, and I think it's a great candidate for a modern upgrade. And for this mod, I'll need a screwdriver with Philips and uh, Nintendo Tri-Wing bits, an IPS-ready shell. One I'm using is a Retro 6 IPS-ready DMG-style shell, and the IPS screen itself. By the way, this is um, how that Nintendo Tri-Wing uh, screwdriver looks like. You also need a soldering iron and a few other bits. So with these tools you can now start disassembling Donor Game Boy. Go ahead and remove all six screws at the back. And gently remove the back cover by pulling it up. There's three additional Phillips screws that hold the motherboard in place, so go ahead and remove those as well. You will also need to detach the ribbon cable that connects the screen to the motherboard, and to do that you need to push up the two plastic tabs and gently remove the motherboard from the case. Be careful, the connector is fragile, make sure not to break it. We'll focus our attention on the replacement shell now. It is IPS ready, but in order to install IPS screen, you'll need to remove a few plastic tabs. You can remove them however you want, I'm just using my fingers and flash cutters to remove the bulk of the material. The uh, remaining bits need to be removed using some sharp tool, and it's the scalpel in my case. The whole area needs to be flush and clean because the IPS screen will go on, go on top of this part, so be sure to remove everything and make it smooth and flat as possible. I'll install the lens next. Just remove the protective layer from the lens, remove the double-sided tape from the back, and carefully place it in the right position. The fit is tight, so there's not much room for an error here. And with all that done, I just place the screen in position to make sure everything fits correctly, and then attach double-sided tape. A word of caution here, this tape is really strong, and once the screen is in place, there's no way it can be removed. The operation is pretty much permanent, so you probably need to use some other adhesive if you ever want to remove the screen. And in retrospect, I would probably install the screen first, make sure everything works, and then um, install the lens as a last step. Don't forget to remove the protective film from the screen before installing. Be extra careful and place the screen in correct position. The key here is to push it to the left and align with the power button plastic tab at the top. Also, the screen is fragile, so don't, don't use excessive force. Time to hit the buttons and rubber contacts and finally install the motherboard. Make sure not to damage the ribbon cable. Make sure it's safe and protected.
Secure the motherboard with a screw and test all buttons. Make sure nothing is sticky or out of place and the buttons function correctly. Then attach ribbon cable to the motherboard by sliding it, it into the connector and securing the pl two plastic tabs. Again, uh, be careful, these are fragile, make sure not to break them. The touch sensor needs to be placed behind the plastic shell and I like to attach it with a little bit of double-sided tape to make sure it doesn't move. So attach the tape, slide the sensor into position, push it against the, the shell uh, and make sure it doesn't move and uh, stays in place. One last thing you need to do is to solder a wire to the power pad on the ribbon cable and the pin number one on the power switch. And the end result should look like this. Time to secure the motherboard with two remaining screws. Don't forget to put back the power switch. And finally, put the back cover and secure it using six, the six tri-wing screws. And that's it. Install two batteries, put the battery cover in place, slide the cartridge in the slot and enjoy the new screen. The contrast wheel can now be used to adjust the brightness, which is a nice touch. And the touch sensor can be used to select one of many available color palettes. Pick your favorite color and enjoy. I think this mod is probably the best option for Game Boy Pocket. The screen looks absolutely amazing and the mod is not hard to do at all. This custom shell makes the job a lot easier and it also looks amazing. I highly, highly recommend this mod. Thank you for watching and please consider subscribing to my channel. Now I'll go ahead and enjoy Bomb Jack on my modified Game Boy Pocket. Thank you.